May God bless you all. In today's sharing, we're going to uh, conclude our brief reflections on Pope John the Twenty Third for the moment, and uh, today we're going to talk about the legacy and also the beatification of Pope John the Twenty Third. Now, as you know known affectionately as good Pope John and the most beloved Pope in history to many people on September the 3rd in the year 2000 John was declared blessed by Pope John Paul II the penultimate step on the road to sainthood he was the first Pope since Pius X to receive the honor Following his beatification, his body was moved from its original burial place in the grottoes below St. Peter's Basilica to the altar of St. Jerome and displayed for the veneration of the faithful. At the time, the body was observed to be extremely well preserved, a condition which the Church ascribes to embalming and the lack of a flow in his sealed triple coffin rather than to a miracle. When John was moved, the original vault above the floor was removed. A new vault was built beneath the ground, and Pope John Paul II was later buried in this vault. The date assigned for the liturgical celebration were authorized of Blessed John XXIII is not the June, the anniversary of his death as would be usual, but 11th October, the anniversary of his opening of the Second Vatican Council. Although his feast day is October 11th in the Roman Catholic Church, he is commemorated on 3rd June by the Evangelican Lutheran Church in America and on June 4th by the Anglican Church of Canada. From his early teens, he maintained a diary of spiritual reflections that was subsequently published as Journal of a Soul. The collection of writings charts Roncalli's efforts as a young man to grow in holiness and continue after his election to the papacy. It remains wildly read. Sedef Akantist, Sedef Akantist and Conclavist Groups have been some of Pope John's most outspoken critics. Many who subscribe to the teachings of Our Lady of Fatima also believe that Pope John deliberately withheld secret prophetic information revealed by an apparition of the Virgin Mary. This is perhaps the basis for internet reports in the late 1990s about the supposed discovery of Pope John's diary where he received prophetic insights into the future, including the return of Jesus in New York in the, in the year 2000, but obviously these are speculations. But although Pope John did have a diary, there is no evidence in it to suggest that he received apocalyptic visions of the future. In 2003, the Guardian newspaper found a confidential communique from John to Catholic bishops allegedly um, manda mandating confidentiality in matters of uh, pederasty with the threat of excommunications. But these allegations were later refuted by Archbishop Vincent Gerald Nichols, chairman of the Catholic Office for the Protection of Children and Vulnerable Adults. Nichols explains that the communique is not directly concerned with child abuse at all, but with the misuse of the confessional. This has always been a most serious crime in church law. But more of that, we know that Pope John Paul's legacy, Pope John's legacy is a very rich one. First of all, we have the Ecumenical Council that he started. It was a big challenge for the Church. Secondly, also, 
his ecumenical experience especially in Bulgaria now we can see that even in today's um, relations with uh, other Christians of the church with other Christians the Jews are also involved in ecumenical dialogue so this shows how even in Turkey the Pope helped the Jews and this means that even in Bulgaria he was so open to Orthodox in Turkey he was so open to the Jews so also historical matters um, see him and put him as the ecumenist par excellence John 23rd also his relationship of with the world it is said that more than 23 official visits uh, were made at the Vatican during his reign and that shows how this good Pope really was open also to the diplomatic corps in a incredible way was so much open to the world at, at large and obviously his characteristic style is dialogue let us talk let us talk let us talk in the previous recording we heard that the last words of Pope John were stop the council stop the council but was it because he was against the council or maybe as Pope John as Pope Paul VI said he did not know practically uh, what the consequences of his decision to start an ecumenical council all this help us to conclude especially with his charming and personal affection and paternal paternal love that Pope John XXIII we can say that is one or I rather say the most loved Pope in the history of Catholicism precisely because in his old age against all odds he was courageous enough that by the Holy Spirit he was strong to bring about all this change Father God thank you for this exceptional man full of the Holy Spirit Pope John 23rd help us that in Jesus name in Jesus blood and the Holy Spirit we continue to follow his example to be fully open to the Holy Spirit no matter the consequences that we will be entering in in Jesus name in Jesus blood and the Holy Spirit I pray Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And may the Lord Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.